interrupting the current neo-coronial cricketism to bring you behind the woodshed. This is Cricket Tude Busting Episode BTWRLM416. We're back, and we're continuing the real nonsense in the world. Although we may have a little bit of a reprieve of the lunatics who think you are the problem in the world. Remember, it's behind the woodshed now with Acme 3D View. Sparing no expense, folks, bringing you the latest tools to bring you that dose of reality, the Acme 3D View, good for those new green pass QR codes, if and you hold your eyes just right. Yeah, that QR code that's coming. We're going to talk about that. The thing you're going to have to have, that green pass. Look how integrated this whole thing is moving and moving through the reset so-called from all the different players that are there for all the different reasons. You actually... Referencing, I think uh, David Toulis out of Tennessee coined the term MOOF. Those that wear masks, it's what it sounds like when you talk with them or listen to them. Uh, you might see the grand mooftees of the pharmaceutical religion recruiting whole divisions of fanatics. If you look at that QR code just right, those fanatics will be coming to fight and kill in the name of extremism, advancing medical terrorism and theocracy for the prophet deity and treatment tithing of the Cove Fraud 19 faithful. If you don't think religion's part of this whole thing and part of how this all works and then they get you focused on other things and you don't realize they're, every these, these people are doing the same thing to you. Anyway, get your eyes just quit, just right at that QR code you're going to have to be presenting from your phone and you might be able to see within this the patterning, the, the picture, the 3D view that comes up. This one's going to be animated. This is not just going to be the picture of the uh, cute little dragon holding balloons. This is going to be the reality that's hitting us right in the face. And we haven't done anything about it. And we have every power to do. There's no no real, no standing to do anything here relative to... There's no... There's no um, no, there, there's all the standing in order to stop it. And very few have been standing up. And as I've explained to you, very I don't, I don't know very many at all that do it actually correctly by attacking the fraud. I'm not quite sure why, but at any rate, all this stuff brings green religion. It's another green-based religion that you, you all are symptomat, asymptomats. All you all asymptomats are, are guilty, and you're blamed for the symptom de- deficit disorder. In other words, if you're not part of the race of the chosen, those that chose the to have their DNA changed, those that chose to get, we're going to find out it's AIDS, folks. I've been telling you this is what's going on. It's now, it hit the news as a, as a big promotion this week. And it, again, I was just looking at some other things. And it happened to start off with that Noisome Newsome getting his J&J shot. And very interestingly, without talking with some of you, you sent me your studies, not relative to that, but something else that focused in on J&J. So this was a full-blown, full-court press for promoting another, the other vaccine you haven't heard about too much. But it's now coming out that there's stuff coming behind it, which is exactly what I told you was happening when you're dealing with someone since 1984 has dealt with trying to, well, they created a problem. They created the illusion of AIDS and they tried and they made big money on that. They switched on into, they were able to move that into cancer treatments, uh, that type of theory. And now they've got it on you and they're putting that to you. We got all the evidence this week all came together. All with the promotion of uh, Newsom, uh, Noisome Newsom out of California governor getting his J&J shot. Whether he did or not, I don't know. But uh, some business here. Like true, the true believers, the green-based religion of the medical tyranny, uh, YouTube has just removed the broadcast Fake Spurts Masquerade from 7-19-2020. That's BTWRLM 379. Uh, for what they call to be a violation of their uh, medical misinformation policy. Now, they just say they think they think that we did it as they, they don't have a brain. They're just the adherence to the green-based medical terrorism religion. They say what our policy says, YouTube does not allow content that spreads medical misinformation to contradict local health authorities or the health, World Health Organization, who, not the rock group or the owl, but the who, medical information that the World Health Organization wants to put out about COVID-19, including on methods to prevent 
treat or diagnose COVID-19 and means of transmission of COVID-19. Well, if anybody who's been listening to me or done any basic research, you realize none of those are actual authorities. Uh, they cannot, until they can identify the infectious agent, determine anything about how to do any of that, prevent, treat, or diagnose. They certainly can't tell about the transmission. And let me get to the point about the broadcast. I don't think I ever refer to anybody as an authority that isn't those folks. And in their own documents, they're telling you they're killing you. They're mistreating you. They're abusing you. They don't have the truth. They haven't made a stable set pattern of of information to you at all. And so these are, again, just evidences. If you want, for those of you that have supported the broadcast and Go to RLM and donate and all that. Again, I can't thank you enough. It's only going to be very limited places to get some of this information. And I don't talk about the fact. It's not to talk about the fact that they're lying to you. I'm trying to get people to defend themselves against how they're lying to you. This is the battle. People don't quite appreciate. I don't think people appreciate it, actually. Also, (laughs) the broadcaster is taking some CEO point dings. The broadcaster content. There's somebody in in the background that sets up how the SEO, the, the sites uh, pick, get picked up by Google and such for search engines and how they rank. You know, the blogcaster now got dinged because the content or tags have, be, have been too intelligent for the average Internet reader. And I'm going to ask you, is that good or bad? Thank you for all, the, all you intelligent folks listening in, too intelligent for uh, the Internet. But that's where we're at, aren't we? So here we are, folks. This is what's going on. If you don't have the the base mediocre knowledge, the base mediocre acceptance, I've explained to you how the WHO and uh, the CDC have been brought into your states and how they were by rule, not by legislation. And this is where you attack it. They brought in a promulgated rule which does not fulfill the intent and purpose to allow these foreigners to come in and dictate it ends up being a dictation to your local official, abrogating what the legislature said would be a certain process. And let me touch a little bit. Let me get right back to that medical misinformation policy. Where, and I've said this before, and I, I think we might have addressed this with the Grimner on one of they tried to say we were doing spam on our own con- on my own content on RLM's uh, YouTube account. Uh, I think uh, Grimner handled that pretty quickly. But remember, they say information mis- contradicts local health authorities. If they haven't made a declaration of an actual, from a report, underneath the communicable disease law, the local officials have not declared the start even the outbreak of something. You can't have medical misinformation on something that doesn't exist. The local officials have not committed that they're supposed to, but they didn't. That's the fraud. And so YouTube, I mean, these people are just completely absent. I'd like to call them a lot of names. I'm probably not very good at doing that anyway, but... These we're dealing with some mediocre mental deficients that it doesn't take much to even get in the website management of SEO policy to, to show that you can be a little bit too intelligent quick. I'm telling you, folks, just the content links, which is the titles of the broadcasts I put up, which is the content links is all, and then the tags I create, which are probably not real good for tags. I think they're, I'm just trying to restate the, 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 the process and the tags they're not so simple sometimes. I understand that. But that's become too intelligent for the Internet. And you're only getting that only behind the woodshed, I think, because it didn't happen. I haven't seen it happen in lots of other places. And I could be wrong. I like to don't like to promote, but I'd like to at least tell you, I think I have something to offer and have had something to offer. I think what I'm suggesting is beyond the news. It's actually taking that understanding its notice. And there's something that they're telling these people that are coming against us. They're telling us how they're doing it. We just have to figure out and decide we want to take responsibility to stop the abuse against us. And I don't know that I see many people stepping up for all that. And I, I don't know what to do about that part. But here's another, another thing against us. We've talked about this for years. And this is the ongoing saga of how this thing works. These people are there, these green religion-related uh, abuses and um, miscreants, thinking that they they are in a position of the world to make a, a world for you that they think is better for you than you are for yourself, which is a prime violation of your own private rights in any place like the United States of America, even though you all have been uh, derelict to protect all that, or even know how. And uh, I'm not, that's not a judgment. That's just what I see. And uh, so 
coming out the gate finally, we get somebody respond. The United States didn't do it. Harvard didn't do it. No, they, they offered this, this attack on humanity. Uh, Sweden aborts Bill Gates' funded experiment aiming to blot out the sun to fight climate change. Now, I don't know what abortifacient they used, but there it is. Sweden looked at what Bill Gates had to do, and the news I just said that the, putting aerosols in the atmosphere to block out the sun w- was probably not a good deal. Now, I don't know who these people are, and I don't know where they get their ideas. And it's interesting how you get into different subject matters and you think about different things. They become important to you. And it occurred to me, just in looking at uh, bee, uh, honeybee life cycles, I'm not sure if people appreciate how close to a, to a collapse a colony can be, how fast bee, honeybees are reproduced, how quickly they go through a life cycle. They're, they're going into spring and then moving through summer. They only last about 35 days. Over the winter, they last a bit longer, but they're not made as bees to go work. They're made to maintain themselves through the winter. That there is timing schedules within the, the spring. And if th- something like this stupidity where they block out the sun... They take on just a little bit of light just to see about climate change because of the other spacious criminal activity that they make about uh, saying carbon is a poison to life when life needs it. Life is carbon-based here. Uh, When you blot out the sun and you stop the pollen, the trees from wanting to to create their pollen, you're dealing in a a two- to a three-week window that you could kill all the pollinators. Is what... My observation, I never thought about this time, how critical this timing is. I'm not here to save the bees, necessarily. I'm saying we're dealing in things when we talk to people like Bill Gates, who doesn't care about you, thinks that you're the problem, wants to kill you to save the planet, who says, well, if I go ahead and I blot out the sun, we're going to start climate change, indirectly saying he wants to kill you all off. Partly that's going to be to kill off the pollinators, that their window of op- their window of opportunity to start up in the fall when you're hearing this year, I'm hearing lots of people having trouble. They blot out the sun, and that sun and that heat and that energy doesn't come back to get the flowers to start coming out at the right time. You'll kill off those poll- at least the honeybee pollinators because they are, they're starting up, and they need they go through a couple of bounces in, in population that if you take out their pollen source, they die. We're talking three weeks here. That's a, that's a long time, too. Actually, it, start, it happens in 12 days, 12 to 15 days. And so we're not, these guys, Bill Gates and stuff, they really need to be corralled. They need to be arrested. They need, someone needs to settle down and stop whatever else you think you're doing and figure out how to bring re- real criminal charges to bear. And there's a certain way to do that, and you have a certain knowledge, not because you say so, but because you can tie the elements close together, like I've told you forever since I've been broadcasting, how we're going to be able to defend ourselves is to go to the very thing that they have been denying to you, it's the very thing I found in the mining law. They deny to us. They don't. De- they deny the property to us. And so, what's the antidote? You come with a black and white that says there's a property, and they don't have a right to do that. That's the actually. It seems the only antidote. And so, anyway, just have a unless we can have a little bit of reprieve. Someone like Bill Gates, Sweden, at least says that Bill Gates is not going to go do that experiment. They're not going to use the Swedish space corporation to attack you on an experiment. Oh, they're only going to throw a little bit of dust in the air. Well, they're dealing in systems they have no clue about. It's the same thing that they're dealing in the vaccines. It's all about how they're going to manage for the profit in the future to do things, or in this case, the agenda to kill you off, consolidate humanity, and control it. Yeah, a different type of hive. So I I don't know what importance this is um, in some people's minds. This was an ongoing condition. This was started in the United States. Bill Gates picks it up. So you have the integration of the government's public-private partnership going on. He didn't come to the United States to do this. He went to Sweden. And luckily, and I say it's luckily because I don't know, there's not many scientific communities that are not tied into promoting the climate change. Not at, Listen, folks, listen. There's two types of climate change at least. One is the actual climate that changes. And the other one's a political agenda called climate change. And there's not many people being funded inside the system, inside the governments, that's not being paid by the governments that support that political system, the universal political system. 
And so you, I don't know if people I don't know if people appreciate this condition. However, it's uh, maybe luckily I came across it and I was able to focus in, and it seems to be the main main focus on how the governments are coming after you. And it, I don't know how anybody can't look at what's happened in the last year even, as we were I was able to immediately tie it. How could I even do that? Tie COVID fraud 19 to climate change to Greta. How was I able to do that? And then you see it's exactly tied together. And then it's also tied inside of a medical industrial complex of that you've been under that we've all been under that we didn't know. In fact, I've been talking to people that are going to the doctors here and there, and it sounds like to me that these um, if you have any type of insurance or this and that, the doctors are together to feed you through the system, and they get tongue and tongue in cheek send, sending you. You're going to folks listen. Those of you that are being told you need operations, you need to go check because what it looks like to me I'm hearing is you are get funneled through before they do any baseline tech checks and they're wanting to do take out your kidneys or whatever, to take out your gallbladder, something simple, something they can get in and then probe around. It's all to make money. It's not to care for you. In fact, I'm, I'm hearing multiple stories that when someone goes to get medical care, they're up against the doctor wanting to go to some convention in Geneva or Switzerland or take a vacation or something, go buy a new car. I don't know. Has nothing I hear anymore seems to be actually focused on your health. You're going to have to take responsibility for that. That said, there's some pretty wonderful doctors that really do take it serious. So you have to weed through the problem. It's not so simple. Remember, they all have licenses whether they are on the criminal side of that or not. Licenses are the official sanction of allowance of what would be a criminal act to do without that permission. So don't ever under, underestimate this problem that we're facing. And the Swedish uh, Space Corporation uh, stressed that the scientific community itself is divided on the appropriateness of such, uh, such uh, experiments. Well, it doesn't seem that uh, they work about the dividing. It's whether or not they can build a consensus. I'm glad to hear that they didn't be able to do that here. And uh, maybe goodbye to uh, Bill Gates. Hopefully that sends a message. But this is sending us an alarm message that there's people out there that are working. They call it science. It's not. It's, a, it's, a, it's actually steps toward uh, getting the foot in the door. Like you saw the emergency. It's all the same thing. It's all getting the agencies. Not getting. They just It's all part of the plan. The agencies went ahead and gave emergency authorization to the vaccines. And that's, they, if you listen carefully and it's not so hidden anymore, that opens the door to actually make them part and parcel to your future. Notwithstanding all their harms, which will never, never become. Remember, you asymptomats are guilty, not them. And if you're not part of their asymptomatic, if you're not part of their symptomatic uh, treatment, future treatment, then you're going to be the problem. That's in anybody who feels different. Then, uh, contrary to what they say, you don't have right to property, you don't have a right to existence without their say. The proof of it is that they have a say, and no one shuts it down. It is, I'm just astonished at all this. I don't really know what to say beyond that. But so uh, we also have someone who has been a voice of of uh, reason uh, that's also been vilified way a lot more than I would ever I would ever be, I think, and just from the amount of people. But uh, I was disappointed. But I understand I understand at one level disappointed on the other that Dr. Vernon Coleman. A link was sent to me that he's saying goodbye. Thank you. His, uh, he got attacked by somebody on Twitter. Now, th this is bothering to me. Why he was so staunch and beady, he, could, he would fight against the system itself and then let someone from Twitter, who then retracts that Twitter, that tweet, uh, is, is uh, I don't know. I don't know what that means. It's a kind of interesting. He would let that happen to him. But uh, he, enough is enough to him. And enough enough becomes, enough enough is enough for lots of us. In this case, I'm, I wanted you to know he has a, he's telling you goodbye. He's going to go maybe to write. And maybe if you could then, I, I mean, it's not my place to tell him. Like, maybe it's not our place to tell him. But maybe we should encourage him to not let somebody on Twitter who can't get the facts right, who can easily, I said it, Vince, easily, be exposed for the lunatic and the, and the abuser that they are. He really needs to come back and be that voice. And I'm saying that, I guess, in a, to me, why I even come back every week, it looks bleak. It looks absolutely, you get attacked, you get ignored, whatever it is you get. No one listens is the other, the other hard, hard thing to watch. Uh, not no one. I understand, not no one, but that's just, what, just how it turns out. You say no one because lots and lots are not, and we need more. 
uh, but you just you you just get fed up. You just can't keep up. You just can't defend yourself from all the the slings and arrows. But in this case, it's all just verbal. So I'm disappointed that he's doing it. I basic I kind of understand it. But we need people like Vernon Coleman. But if 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 the, he's going to go away for sure and just do writings, which people are nece- not necessarily too maybe not too interested in, then his voice go his voice literally goes down. His writings are the only thing that remains. So just a note. I'll have a link to you. Goodbye and thank you from Dr. Vernon Coleman. He's had enough. He's had an attack uh, from Twitter. Uh, just a cruel, uh, mis uh, misguided um, I- ignorance uh, out there, and uh, somehow that broke him a bit. So. They even criticize how he broke down and cried, uh, you know, on a video, which, I mean, I've said to myself, oh, we all have the same, we all go through the same despair. I just told myself I wouldn't cry until the, the battle was done. And if I don't ever get the battle done, then I'll never cry. There's a, I don't even know what to call the word. There's a despair that you look around and you see people suffering and they don't, it's like you don't even know it and they don't defend themselves. And I, those of us, I guess we care enough that we don't know we don't know how to handle that at some level. I mean, what do you do with that? What's our emotion for that? So, but he was criticized for actually, I would say, being a man to cry a bit, you know, just to show that. I mean, it's just to break down a bit. And that broke, and then that came through as a reflection to him, and it 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 sealed it sealed him out of wanting to do this. So, anyway, this is a very fragile condition for people that are on the front lines trying to tell people. Uh, if and I'm saying that only to people that want to hear the message. And I don't mean the message like the choir. I mean sometimes like Vernon Coleman. For me, he's the, I could say, well, I don't. I've said all the same things, but he's he's the authority. He's the doctor, and I mean the good doctor. He's the one that lays it all out for us. Because uh, in our mind, perception-wise, a doctor would have a a lot more authority than the guy behind the woodshed. It takes time to research what the guy behind the woodshed might say to see the very same things. So we have this, this societal prejudice as well. And I'm happy to hand it over to him if it makes people come quicker to the truth to save themselves, to stop, to help them protect themselves. Having insights that may avoid the pitfalls that I see really everywhere without trying to be, what can I, what is it, um, looking at every everywhere as a pitfall. Because it's not. It's a, Again, that narrow path is there. I'm always looking for the narrow path for people, not to let them watch off in the, br- in the brush and get beat up. Like I've been cautioning about taking people's things and apply them, mis- applying them different than you're explaining on the on the internet. Even all these hours I I spend talking to you, I cannot get to the specificity of what I'm talking about. There's just no way. It takes email after email to slowly move into certain aspects of a subject matter someone may want help on. And so it, this is not. They've got us in a really bad way, and uh, it's going to take. I guess more than what I see, and again, voices like Dr. Vernon Coleman, whatever whatever people would say about him in critique, uh, to me those are just uh, those are either enemy or those are just stupid people, literally stupid people, and we don't need to hear from them. And when they withdraw their their comments, on the one hand, they withdraw their comments. We we see the we we see how vaporous their their opinion is. Why they were giving any credit. Why Vernon Coleman would give the Dr. Vernon Coleman would give them any credit to defeat him that way, I'm I don't know, but uh, I can I just want to let people know there's people on the front lines of information and trying to figure out what to do and doing things that after a while and I've heard it all my all my life people just stop and they walk away and you're going to be without all that information for as much as you think you continue to need it I say you have enough in your spirit you have enough spirit in you to move forward on your own. And uh, with a little bit of guidance that possibly I can give maybe somebody else to start you on your path. You just got to find that path. You know, and this is do- doable. Like he would say, we need to unite and work. Well, we need to work. I don't say unite like unity. We need to be working and responsible to what we find the wrong we need to make right. And all of us are doing that. That's the unit. That's the unif- unif- unification of it. We're all stopping the harm that we see around us. And that's why I won't condemn anybody who who's trying, but I do want to guide. Let's say not to po- uh, like Peggy Hall. She focused on masks. Okay, that's one aspect, but that doesn't stop the fraud, does it? It just gives the the perpetrator of the fraud more time to come up with stuff. It makes education for people to have to battle amongst themselves to show their side. That doesn't stop the fraud, the governmental fraud, the failure of law, the thing that everyone complains is not there, but no one steps up to 
identify it and hit them. Again, not no one. There's still people that are trying. And they're doing it their way. And so I'm asking us to, those of us that listen to me, and those of us six degrees in, in separation, which we may get to at the end of the broadcast, I'm theoretically six people that listen to me or don't and know someone that listens to me from someone in Israel who's making a plea. Because they just found out it was a trap. That we are that close in communication that it's interesting to me that even though I'm six people away from talking with her, I'll never talk with her. And there's also a thing about respecting people's space and not intruding, being asked. A lot of people don't have a little bit of that. So, anyway, we have a whole lot to work with amongst ourselves. I wish we would pull together to do that, and we would move this thing on and not have a few people be taking the brunt of the of the hits. And then finally, in this case, he's not broken, but he's not going to be a, a voice with a video that is a statement every day or whatever, whatever that you're going to be able to hear if you still need to hear more. Coming on and slowly, we have uh, an interesting... A victory of, of sorts, but I'm still hesitant to say it's a victory because it's agreeing that Cove Fraud 19 exists and it's something. But the Wisconsin Supreme Court overturns a statewide mask mandate, blocks Governor Evers from declaring multiple emergency orders. This is not exactly what I've been telling you, but this is how one way that somebody stepped up, identified for them what they wanted to address, and they attacked the ongoing and continuous emergency orders in the state of Wisconsin to not have authority after the first one and and in their state, and this is why you have to go state by state, their state required that the concurrence of the legislature, which never came. And so as long as nobody is fighting this, these things should be tested, and they're not. And I'm saying that notwithstanding the corruption in the court. Apparently, the Somebody can come up with the right idea. Somebody got a case through, and the Supreme Court went ahead and discussed it, even though, this, understand, this is even in accepting the fraud, the governor was outside the law, and he was duty-bound to that law. It wasn't like in Tennessee where they're saying, I, there's no, I have no duty to any law. And the courts are, all, and the courts are okay with that. Sure brings clarity to why Tennessee courts is a third most corrupt by by complaint. And y'all need to make more of those complaints. And I'm having discussion with my friends about that, about what we did back when, and we may not have gone to the next step and follow through. And then we bring ourselves to the point where Alphonse Fagiolo has found out, if you go to that next step and you start pressing on their bar membership, then possibly, we're not told, but possibly it looks like to hit for his evidence you're going to start dinging them where it counts, and that's the pocketbook, and that's the protection. Again, the corporate society is a risk management society that insurance is part and parcel. So it's all integrated, and you can't have insurance without being part of that thing. Anyway, so uh, Wisconsin Supreme Court overturns. Interesting thing to read. You need to read how this worked out. Uh, the It's turned out that there is a law. There, The governor has to follow certain things. It's by the black and white, I keep telling you. And all you states that are still locked down, that this similar condition was going on, you all can go in and do this very same thing. Or you can kind of maybe even, if you can't do it, find someone. Again, you're six degrees from somebody who can do something. You can tie people together. And I'll see my dog Rex in the chat room at RLM. A great supporter, great supporter of what we're doing and in integrating with the information and he was one instrumental with tying me up with someone else, not tying me up, but connecting me up with someone across the country, which I would have never known for. And though it's been a, a very hard slog, I've said it's important to make a, a record that people can under, should be able to understand to see the type of tyranny they're really under. And that hopefully will put pressure on people to consider. Hopefully you know he gets up, gives up. That's the other problem here. People like to give up. But hopefully not. Hopefully you get, you know, rightly, righteously indignant, and you'll actually step up, knowing, as I was talking with someone in the email, right, knowing of the good old boys system, and that to me it just turns into be the bar association occupying your life, and we can now, it's not just an opinion. We have records to show show this, and we're integrating strategies in order to, 
to bring it out, bring out and, and again show that there is no impart, there is no independence if you, indep- I mean, separateness in the branches. And you have you have to go test that. In Wisconsin apparently that governor is not supposed to be doing like that, and I'm going to have to say that there's going to be a lot of states that have the same condition that if you're still under a mask mandate, again they agreed to the fraud here, but still the governor didn't have power to put a broad statewide mandate on everybody. Virginia restaurant tour. Now we're getting down to the businesses. Remember, it used to be salons, and we didn't hear much about those, and lots of those people are in jail. I understand one lady in Texas may still be in jail. Again, I was telling you not to do this with Jeopardy. You go in with a better record, but nobody wants to listen, I suppose. Virginia restaurant tour who ignored mask mandate beats government in court. And this was on an injunction based on a charge from the state and the court found the important points relative to this condition. I want to bring this in again. Even with the fraud and even with someone at a state claiming they have a right, this court, a court finally came in and said two things. One is that the state had failed to clearly demonstrate the factors necessary to grant a, a temporary injunction against their, the business's continued operation. In other words, there's your word demonstrate on what I call, demo, what the courts have made the phrase, and I just adopt and use regularly, demonstrable exigency. You've not just demonstrated the real cause that invokes the police power. This court says it's that's important, and they fail. And so status quo underneath an injunction is status quo continues, which is that business gets to continue. Now, this case doesn't argue the fraud of the COVID, co-fraud, Co-fraud 19. That's one of the problems why it continues. But we find in this case, as we see in Wisconsin, actually imposing law. There's law out there. And Wisconsin just did it, even though they agreed to the fraud. They embrace the fraud like every other state as a judiciary. There are laws even operating inside this fraud. And it's been said before, no, no medical emergency can destroy your constitutional rights. Well, I've been watching them destroyed for a year and a half or a year and, a, and some months now. Uh, even after telling everybody it was coming. And so I don't know whether that's the truth, but partly it's not when you step up or you do some, something inside locally to you. So the, I th- one of these issues was a declaratory judgment. I think that's what the Wisconsin case. I've been uh, working, and I haven't been back to a project because of all the corruption I've been watching, and it's going to waste a lot of time if you don't understand it or you do the wrong things. I've been wanting to get a handle on it. I've been suggesting another option, which was declaratory judgment. We, at least in Wisconsin, we may have a model, although the model that I will offer as a suggestion will be to challenge the fraud up front. That people are fighting, and there's another guy uh, in um, Huntington Beach. We sent a link to a gentleman. The restaurant says no mask allowed. Leave the mask, take the cannoli. Under in the idea of the Godfather, it's an Italian restaurant. As uh, seemingly there's more Italian restaurants fighting this thing from the beginning. Basilico's Pasta Evino employees do not wear face coverings. Don't allow it. They don't allow the face coverings. He's been up front against Noisome Newsome. Uh, I've got a video for you you can listen to. It really has a sense of the Godfather speaking to the government. Uh, I'm not quite sure. They said they didn't respond, but I don't know. They were in a court case uh, here a couple weeks ago. I haven't I haven't done any more checking. I don't have the time to get into all this, but. Uh, they, they're just doing on the on the instinct that that we have rights. I'm a little concerned for that because they're not making the record that says that they haven't, like I've been telling you, that the government doesn't have the standing to make that argument yet, and put anything on them. In other words, what I haven't heard him say is that he has not made the declaration, like we heard in the other court. This other court said that business back east was not declared to be a risk to the public. That's what this host, this restaurant tour needs to do out west. In, in Huntington Beach, uh, he needs to state that right up front. And so when the, 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 when you when you do that, you're now what you're doing is you're stating the last thing that happens in that in that process. The legislature has commanded must be done. I use that particularly because we just ran into a court case that, in fact, these legislations are commands to the ex- executive. I would use the word mandate. But I can now feel free to use the word command. This is a pretty strong condition. When you're thinking about co-equal branches, you think they have a little bit of latitude. No, no, no. When the legislature makes a law, the executive is stuck by the command. And so 
that's what if he if these if all of you all that are fighting all these restaurateurs would say my restaurant's never been shown to be a risk to the public they would have that one step on the foundation that they need on the other hand then they say the state has not shown demonstrated a non fraudulent exigency they would put their foot on the other foundation and this is what you'll be having to do if we keep moving into where it's going would I hear your governors, despite these decisions, in other places, liberalized places like California, Oregon, Washington, they're actually doubling down. They're, I just heard they're going to be going to mandatory masks, mandatory vaccines, mandatory everything control, mandatory screw your life up, don't ask you. And there's no authority for any of it. And until people start stepping up, even doing it wrong, at least, I mean, like simple wrong, not fatal wrong, which you almost can't do when you're just doing the lawsuit to challenge it, Enough people coming at it, they will storm that fort that's being created to that that the government's lobbing needles and lobbing debris, the mass debris on you uh, to make you comply. But there's an OC restaurant. They don't care. They From day one, they haven't listened. They're, they're thumbing their nose, nose at, at the governor. And apparently there's a, there's in some processes uh, the, that. There is people that are out there doing it. I am I cringe a little bit as how they go about it. I think it's cool. You know, t- taking on the idea, the the Godfather idea, and then it's not based in the in organized crime, but actually, I'm a I'm an American, and we have rights, and we're not gonna those are not those are non-negotiable. That's pretty valiant. Except to my mind, you could do it a little bit better. Again, I said do that, but do it without a jeopardy. Make a record, make a record that it just can't be assailed. And if, if they try to come against it, they you expose the system doing that for what people think that they are and it seems like they are but because they're all locked down and not doing anything they actually agree with the official so everybody that would com- commit to say oh that these are criminal governments they're not doing a thing to protect themselves like a gentleman uh, like this uh, tony i don't know what his last name is sorry but at any rate um, he, the restaurant tour in, in huntington beach he's He's there up front immediately. They never, they never capitulate. They're suffering the onslaught of the government, which I believe would be quickly um, neutralized have they, if they say those two things. That now it's not just me saying it. Now we've got it from the court. And then we also have the fact that it's not just a statement that the Constitution just sits there with standards that aren't to be met. No, it's supposed to be met, and the legislature commanded what was to be met. That is non-negotiable a duty and obligation upon the executive. So we can all give lip service to a government that doesn't serve us and this and that and stay quiet, but you're just a hypocrite at that point, to my mind. And I would rather see someone like Tony Roman, that's what his name is, I'm thinking about it, step up his way and just stick in their face, even if I had cringe a little bit on that he could throw in a couple more points and having him do that than listening to everyone else that's not doing anything. That's just, I don't understand that point. So more success here and there as people start stepping up even this over a year late now after it started. And they're doubling down in places as well. And there's no validity for it at all. Uh, more concurrence uh, with, uh, you know, Dr. Vernon Coleman saying goodbye and saying I'm going to go right now. I've been insulted enough. I've had it. Uh, he would write about these things. You can spread COVID-19 after getting the vaccine. I've said it. The guy behind the woodshed is not a doctor. It's not hard to go read the official documents that YouTube is too stupid to figure out you're pulling from and too stupid to put two and two together to know that you're not going against the official record. You're just showing, digging up the records they're burying. Because they are in a green-related mentality to destroy your life. All these people are. It's all this system was made for you to be in a trap. So you can spread COVID-19 after getting the vaccine. But can I say no, duh, folks? Can I say it? I mean, can I say it and without being too trite? I've been predicting this the whole time. When you look at the technology, it hasn't been so, it hasn't been a question. Expert experts, slow drips under pressure, say people can still spread and even develop COVID-19 after getting a vaccine. No kidding. Where do we learn that, folks? It's really simple. You don't need to know a lot. You go read the CDC's document. It's, it gives you the problems of the, of the counterindications to what this is, the serious side effects that they list. Endless list, it seems. 
But that was an ongoing list. Remember, they said it was an ongoing list. They never said it was final. And so they've got you into this guinea pig paradigm. No one, no one says anything about. They're now admitting what I told you was telegraphed to us in when the Disney finally for clear and for true in the Disney uh, Walt the Disney World whatever I don't even know Disney World but uh, Disney Land I think it was measles outbreak. Well, everybody got measles. We're actually vaccinated, and that we had suspicions before. We had also had some proof, but. You know, we're just conspiracy theorists, and we're not doctors, so it doesn't matter. But it finally came out that these vaccines actually give you the thing that they are tr saying that they're trying to protect you against. And they have this elaborate, nonsensical type of reason why that works. But it doesn't. It's just to bring these things in, into the, your world, into your life, actually reduce your quality of life ultimately and put you underneath further treatment. So you are a shedder, as I've been saying behind the woodshed. So here, to those of you that are asymptomatic, you have a concern. I told you this; these treatments would be the pandemic. They would set that up to get this to start flowing, and that would be the pandemic. And now they're going to come after you to make you part of the spreaders. They're going to get their herd immunity, but it's not immunity. It's going to be herd affliction, and it's going to be AIDS. I'm telling you, it's the symptoms of AIDS. It's the thing that was brought on by an unhealthy lifestyle or what seemed to be an unhealthy lifestyle, people that had other things in their mind than just being uh, maintaining a, a balance in their life, a health, wealth, life, and all that stuff. And they got a little, a lot of indulgent, run themselves down and became symptomatic with what? What your body does when it gets tired and, and gets uh, attacked, when it's shedding toxins, when it's can't keep up with biological functions, it goes into what? Flu-like symptoms. It's just what we do. Now, these people have taken that issue. But Bill Gates understands there's a sun out there. Otherwise, why would they block it? Now, Green Religion will deny there's a, a sun, but they know there's a sun out there. And they know they need to block it out if they want to kill you off. But here we go. You're going to get flu-like symptoms. Now they're going to give you flu-like symptoms. These va these vaccines do it. I don't even know if, why I'm reading uh, reading some of this sometimes, but I want to be clear on the record that there is not, I don't know of any misinformation I've provided. There's no excuse in some regard about us not having the answers for this. This is in the mitigation side. This is after you've decided, you know, is this, as I've done in the, uh, the one lawsuit in Tennessee, it was set up to say, well, first we have the fraud. Once you break down the wall of a fraud, once you avoid the fraud and you show it's not a fraud, then we're going to attack the the extent at which your police powers went and beyond where it should have. In other words, no no police power invoked exigency should cause another man-made destruction. And that's right in your constitution for the most part. And so there was a again as you load up your you load up your position, it's not an argument, it's a factual position. You put down the main the main core this is fraud. And then if by chance it just happens you don't understand something that they can come and actually show that you had a mistake, then you still have a backup that it still isn't good enough where they exceeded. Again, there's limits to government. There is limits. We're just not seeing it. No one's stepping up, uh, not many, uh, stepping up at all to, to bring it in. They're, they're willing to live within the servitude that's been uh, set up for them at this point, which to me is not people that are free. That's a real, in a way, that's a sickness in our minds, too. It's it's come under the the idea of apathy. This term apathy. No, that's just a bunch of people that are not really worthy of the of being free. I would hope better for ourselves. I'm really hoping better for ourselves. I think we are better, but we're deciding to give it over, give things over to, to other people. I, I don't know, but to, uh, so COVID can spread. Well, COVID can do other things, as we said in that uh, serious adverse events that they know they were giving to people that nobody has really disclosed. Virginia man gets severe rash, skin peels off after taking Johnson & Johnson COVID vaccine. Now, this became an, an interesting problem because this is where we started to see the Johnson & Johnson thing pop up here. And this gentleman, that 74-year-old Virginia man, reportedly had to be rushed to the hospital. There's your serious effect, and it was a bad reaction. And I found another one where another woman somewhere else, I can't remember the place, suffers the very same problem. And so these are not inert, oh, we're just going to give you COVID flu symptoms either. Okay, This is what we talked about. I don't tend to like to go through the lineage of harm 
that comes from them. But because it had to do with the J and J, and that J and J became important to me as far as it took a note to me this week, and then it got promoted, and then it moved and morphed from that into something else, which is what I've been telling you this thing is really about. This I just wanted you to let you know that this is a for those of you that are still not getting the the vaccine, the J and J is not not innocuous. It's not not simple because it's it's not a, uh, not harmful because it's a, the adeno style. It's not the Here's an, a subtle difference. It's not the mRNA where it's a single stranded DNA that transcribes and transfects onto your DNA and then gets directed. This one has a double, it has the adeno double strand DNA. And what that does, it acts more like a neutral thing with a larger virus, much larger than the common cold. And so it, it said, and this is the Russian, this is the Russian base too. It said that that's more able to be dealt with. What they're actually doing is exposing the body to the protein spike uh, coating, the synthesized coating. So they're saying that that's going to be a lot better. Why people are getting rashes with Johnson & Johnson and not we're not hearing it from the Russian is uh, vaccines are interesting in some regard, but I'm not getting lost in that. This is a crime against people. It's serious. Here's some uh, elderly folks that are really getting nailed with this thing as a side effects. Painful, painful, painful. I don't know if anybody had skin rash type problems. They start going over your body. It's not... It's not a fun time at all. It's like you're trapped in a in a pain, a cocoon of pain, and so that's what's that's that's your decision to make. But uh, I'm saying these people are are here to hurt us, and uh, we don't know what the rollout affects. When your body responds like this, we don't know what it's doing to your body. In other words, when your body gets uh, poisoned, no different than if you get too many bee stings, you then it'll be you'll you'll get to the point when one bee sting will kill you. And you got to be watching for that. When does this hit hit you when your next, it sets you up. It weakens you so much that any little trigger somewhere else, not, not just because you see a bee, I'm talking something you can't see hits you and destroys your system, makes it go out of control, which is part of the problem here. So, But to show you how fickle the decisions of the experts are, the foreign experts, I found this very interesting. Where people are being destroyed by these things, uh, the states are looking, and they're going to, in this story, some states drop CDC guidelines and vaccinate people by age group. A number of states are breaking with federal guidelines, federal guidelines, and starting to vaccinate people by age group, drawing criticism from essential workers and people with underlying conditions who are getting bumped back in line, back in line. So let's look at this very carefully. This is exactly what I was telling you. The rules were set up to allow the states to receive the advice and guidance as authority from the CDC. But the actual power, and as we heard of the IHR reservation of the United States federal government, that the states were to determine all these things. That's the exclusive jurisdiction, the exclusive domain of the states. You see, they can disregard the CDC suggestions and they are to do what to now bring everybody more systematically into getting these toxins getting these experimental aids symptom producing things that set your body up for a future fall as you will hear from dr vernon coleman analyzing not the cdc stuff but what your body does what does our body do how does it function and how it responds and so we here we have a, the proof that if you didn't believe me before, the states can go against the guidelines. Just what I was telling you to press, but they don't have, a, they can't, die, the legislature commands to the local authority, the health authority, what shall be done. They shall do that. There's no way to get around it. And they can't displace that duty for some suggestion from a foreigner. It's right here that we now see the evidence the states can make their own decisions, and now they begin. What? But what to do what? To bring everybody into the fold. What gets me on this is, this is experimental stuff. How are they getting the, the, the children now? It was supposed to be above 16. How are they actually doing this? So I'm thinking there's a whole lot of problems going on that mothers and fathers should be looking at as well when they start to impose these things that an investigative report and an uh, on-point letter will have to go on and on. You're just focused on the problem that they're creating, the violations of law. You just dictate those back out. And then you say those have to be resolved. That's your administrative challenge. That sets the thing up for an administrative disposal. 
And so you buy yourself some time, if nothing else, and then you get engaged. Then you can get engaged. How they're going about doing this to everybody, I don't know. Uh, but people are disgruntled. You're not hearing. You didn't hear the drawing criticism from the CDC, did you? No, no, just from the stupid people that are in, in the workers, the worker people. They have no, people have no clue. So they just, oh, i got to do this. No, they, they, no, you just didn't notice something. The CDC didn't peep that it, they couldn't do it. And the states can adjust. But to what? Based On what basis is the, is the point? And so this came along with the J&J harm and all this thing. Then comes up this story, California expands COVID-19 vaccine eligibility. See, they're, this is what they're doing. Governor Newsom, Noisom Newsom, gets his shot. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. You know, the spectacle, the the entertainment of him getting a shot, as we've seen many people don't get them. They look like they're play acting. Uh, but with California expanding the COVID-19 vaccine eligibility to everyone 50 and older, uh, Governor Gavin Newsom got his shot on Thursday morning. Uh, that just brought up a whole bunch of things in my mind for some reason. And I started looking around about this Johnson & Johnson. I just started to notice it was somewhat like uh, that thing I pointed out. I can't remember now what it was. All of a sudden, oh boy, it just slipped my mind what it was. Throughout this, the country, it was the same story again as we've seen before, promoting a thing, pushing a, a, a narrative that ends up being universal across the nation. Completely impossibility without the media. But this is what they start to do. We, we're looking at another one, and this happens here on Thursday. And it was the J and J. He gets the shot. How the and then we see information on how the Johnson and Johnson vaccine works. We haven't heard about all that. What they were focused on before was the Moderna and AstraZeneca. But see, they're expanding it because the J and J is coming online with their production. They've got to find some fools and some April Fools folks. Uh, we, I didn't get to have it on the same day, but yeah, April Fools folks. And in fact, one of the reports comes out from the CDC on April Fools Day. But here's how they explain now how the Johnson & Johnson vaccine works. They go through a very elaborate explanation of what's going on. And, uh, again, it's a way to promote that it's working on the SARS-CoV-2 virus. They explain it's also the adenovirus thing. They, what caught my mind uh, my eye as well is that they worked in collaboration. Remember, collaborators were spies during war against the people uh, to undermine the government eventually. Uh, Gen Jensen Pharmaceutical, Pharmaceutical, the P's are silent, remember? Jensen Pharmaceutical, a Belgian, Belgium-based division of Johnson & Johnson is developing the vaccine in collaboration with Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. And so these collaborators are getting together and they're trying to show you and give you familiar with these things. They offset this with the BioNTech Moderna vaccines and the AstraZeneca and they explained, I think this might have been where I got, they explained about the dual strand DNA in this adenovirus vaccine. I'm not selling them here, I'm just telling you they're promoting the distinction. They're promoting this at the same time that California's governor says he's got one. This is all came together. And then another, then, then it's interesting, some of you sent me emails about these Johnson & Johnson's totally irrespective of the governor, after I was looking at it for a couple of hours, trying to pull things together, thinking this is an important thing to understand, again, how they're promoting this to the public. Not maybe you, not the choir, but they're promoting this as a continuing building uh, swell and momentum that's going to work against you here really quickly, as there's not going to be a place to turn where there's nobody speaking out against it in, the, in more proper ways without the jeopardy that this, I found it very hard to locate this tagline, but it said a whole lot to me. I'm going to give you a link to the story, which comes through an email. Well, did you see all this stuff? This happened to be the Johnson & Johnson thing that's being promoted that week, uh, but not from the source of uh, Newsom, Noisom, Noisom Newsom, and, uh, Pelosi at, at uh, Governor California, uh, that this little tagline says, it says, Johnson & Johnson vaccine rolls out amid concerns. Uh, it says, as the new Johnson & Johnson COVID vaccine rolls out, the healthcare community is trying to ward off misconceptions about it. The vaccine's one-shot feature may be what wins many over. That tagline is everything you need to know. 
This promotion is to avoid misconceptions, but the misconceptions they're trying to avoid is the ones that are interfering with winning people over. This is just a sales promotion. This has nothing to do with health. They have no facts relative to health. This is that public buy-in. This is a consensus collaboration process I've been telling you about. Johnson & Johnson's hitting the scene. They're making The media is making heavy promotion. They roll out Gavin Noisom, Newsom, Pelosi to, get, to tell you how great this thing is. And then we, right before that, we heard it actually causes problems. But this is about winning people over. And this is our problem because they will win people over. They will get the buy-in. This is nothing different than snake oil salesmen pushing a bad product and getting people to buy it. And they're, uh, what, uh, was a fool born every minute? And then there was April Fool's. It's the day for that. It's the day, birthday of celebration for the fools that are out there. And we're in the moment when they're rolling this new one out. Shot one or two. Now they say, well, you're going to get one or two. The vaccine that's available to you, get that. In other words, there's no alternative than getting the vaccine. The question is, do you want to get the one-shot Johnson & Johnson, which has its whole problems, or do you want to have to go through the two-shot one? So you see that they started out with, who wants to get shots? And now they're going to offer you an easier way to get this stuff, this poison. One, one shot or two. No other question, no other point, no other thing, no other option. All, but no matter what it is, whatever is the one available to you, get that. Was a story I, I read uh, just again in this promotion, and, and this is I guess I can say I should say I'm not just talking about vaccines. They do these people anywhere with any subject matter do the same process to get people to win people over to putting a gun to their head and pulling the trigger, and it works. And it's something I've been talking to you about. It's that stakeholder stockholder thing. Um, excuse me. It's a stakeholder stocking horse thing. It's uh, uh, it's the Bernays thing that they figured you out how to how to get at you. They make it emotional for you. You're more likely to finally buy into what they got. And it's even outside of the the green agenda. It's a method of destroying your will, of destroying your resistance, and going with the herd. Peer review is a big thing. Uh, the peer mentality is a big deal. It, very few will go against it. There's plenty of psychological studies about that. But the choice here is. One shot or two, they're implying and looking at the J&J &J because it's the new kid on the block with, oh, we can only do it with one. It's easier here. You want one or two? Well, in any regard, no matter what's available, get the one that's available. No other promotion is going on this week than these things. Then I turned on, and I'm in a way I really should read some of these, but it, again, it just takes so much time to go through and develop the stories. I kind of have to clip through. Within the context of these shots and these promotions and how it works, other subject matters and other culprits start to ooze up. And what came up with on the website on that last story, which is the promotion, the only thing available is a vaccine. Do you want the one that one shot or two shot? It's just a typical sales technique. You don't get, the option of not is not an option there. So that's the, the key there. But what was on that website was this story, which led me down in a totally different trail, <laughs> but ends up going to the end of the broadcast given I get there. And how all the players are really sitting there, all in the green-related stuff, whether or not they profess to be there, whether or not they're known to be there, it ends up being to the end, end result, that end game, if you will, that reset for everyone's different indulgence and acceptance to do that because it's the cover. This thing is the cover. This COVID-19 is a perfect cover. It's a fraud, but people aren't aware of that. People embrace fraud. Their judiciaries embrace fraud. The executive embraces fraud. The legislatures at best don't know what to do with that. And this is what we deal with. Like the red, red legislature, the legislatures are dumbfounded on, on how to deal with this. Especially in cities where the excuse me, the governments, the state governments that are so one-sided politically, which is not an excuse either in a way, but it's, it's it can be used as another cover not to do the right thing, not even to make the right stand, to be uh, allowing confusion. But here was another story on that website. There was the gpb.org site. I saw this story. Some U.S. faith leaders express moral concerns about the Johnson and Johnson vaccine. Okay, so we have. 
ostensibly a rejection, a question of the Johnson & Johnson being so heavily promoted as this now we're looking in the media giving us a balanced view. But what did I just say the last story was about? Oh, maybe one shot or two shot. But make sure you get the shot. Same thing here it ends up being. Notwithstanding the cover that clergy gives moral concerns, the cover of moral concerns, the cover of Catholicism, I believe here, the cover of faith leaders, putting up a, up a moral, of many things you could argue, a moral objection to Johnson & Johnson. That wasn't the point about the, uh, the, the thing that caught my mind, because I'm looking, wait a minute, these church people will hurt people. We know that through the pedophilia, we know that through what religion, organized religion does, we know that through the Pope, the infallible one, joining up with the UN, the Holy See being having an advisor in the advising the UN, the, the embrace of the green-related things. And so these people are not outside of my purview as being wrongdoers. They're not infallible in my eyes. They're not infallible with an objective eye, a, a real truth. But they're going to put out a faux objection. It, it seemed to be more like good cop, bad cop. They're claiming that there's a potential moral problem. Then, they re, then you have to read carefully. They restate they restate the moral problem incorrectly as well on top of it, which shows me more of the intention to deceive people. The new Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine may offer the best prospect for protecting as many Americans as possible, as quickly as possible, but some U.S. faith leaders say they have moral concerns about its development. In a statement released this week, leaders of the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops said, but this feature of the vaccine raises questions about its permissibility. The fact that it is from, produced in part from the use of cell lines derived from aborted human fetus. It's funny they never said anything about any of this before. But here they come up with their concern, their moral concern. This has been in the news. This has been in their product data sheets for years and years and years. All these vaccines have this same thing. Why? They need to train whatever the target is, on human cells. And we, there's two of them, the male and the female, remember? And I'll remember the numbers. They're, they're, they're out there. So they, the Catholic bishops are coming out to make this ostensible moral objection to Johnson & Johnson. But let's go to the, to the trick. What did it say in the previous article that I was reading that caught my eye on this one? They say one shot or two shot is your choice. In this story, they say, we have a moral objection to Johnson & Johnson, but you know... That Pfizer and Moderna vaccine, that might be the one that you want. If one has the ability to choose a vaccine, has the ability to choose. What they say before? Oh, we didn't have any sources, but now we're going to let you all have it. doesn't matter your age. If one has the ability to choose, parroting the first one, one shot or two, choose that. Choose Pfizer or Moderna's vaccine. Comes out of the mouth of an archbishop. The arch enemy seems to be in my mind. Out of Kansas, Toto. Kansas City, Kansas, Toto. And so here we have the same promotion going on through the Catholic Church. Oh, the Johnson & Johnson, we have an objection to. You would be better to go get the Pfizer and the Moderna. The actual, the one that actually has the one, one DNA that's going to be blended, uh, transfected to your system private property into your system. Fascinating. So here was the theme, folks. I don't know. I hope you're finding and appreciating the condition, the promotion. Who's involved? These are all the players, folks, if you didn't understand it. These are all the players that have ever been as well. They're all looking. They're all false prophets. No, not the biblical ones, the ones for money. And this becomes important about the the, 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 the Vatican. They even they, they come up the same week to talk about this profit thing. They're not getting enough. But they bring this moral objection as a cover to sell you the other two, which in my mind actually might actually be worse. Although I, I mean I shouldn't even say that. They're all bad. I mean I wouldn't take any of them myself. There's not this is an experiment. And this is an experiment with brand new technology that's never been experimented on anybody before, and they likely can't. But remember, you got Title 50 sitting back there that allows this to all happen, and how they had to do that was go through the military to have it happen. 
Don't ever forget the uh, lineage here, what we're under. This is a war. Now, who the player are, who? This Catholic bishop sales job brought my mind to something I reported back years ago now. Just hit it and run, folks, just to let you know it's not, this is, these people are involved with hurting people, and they, they put out the faux cover like they care, but they allow it anyway. And I wanted to remind people about how this worked as well. The WHO uses vaccines to secretly sterilize women in Africa. Who was involved in that? No, not the WHO, the rock group, the or even the World Health Organization, the, the groups that were involved, but the church. In fact, they supposedly raised an alarm. Remember, if you raise the alarm and you make it like you're pointing to someone who's doing the cause, your culpability goes out like you're the one that just saw and witnessed the crime. This is a cover. In some areas of the world, this is done like I think in 2013, it finally came to rise, uh, this note. So the bishops are promoting the same thing. It's not something new. They do this throughout throughout our time, in these times of bringing this uh, fabricated uh, medicine called vaccines forward. In some areas of the world, purposely cutting off someone's family line is considered to be one of the most wicked things that you can possibly do. But that appears to be precisely what the United Nations is doing to UN organizations, the WHO and the UNICEF, and I shouldn't be saying those as words because they're not, but at any rate, they are just letters, have just been caught red-handed administering tetanus vaccines laced with sterilizing agents to girls and women in Kenya. Okay, so we go through all the players, Obama and all this other stuff. Well, the point was that this was called out by Kenya's Catholic bishops are charging the two United Nations organizations with sterilizing millions of pe- girls and women under cover of an anti-tetanus inoculation program sponsored by the Kenyan government. Can you say anti-communicable disease inoculation program sponsored by the United States government? Can you say a f- anti a f- COVID, COVID fraud 19 inoculation problem a program sponsored by the United States government and every other government in the world to sterilize you, to bring rashes on you, to bring who knows what all in your life, to bring the symptoms of AIDS, which they're going to give you little pills for now like they did back in the 80s. For some of you not even even alive then to even know that. As I told you, a friend of mine who's a gay guy, we talked uh, quite a bit for about six months. I happened to be riding with him. We were working uh, cable we were cable maintenance technicians in electronics. We had uh, long discussions moving from job to job and doing things on the, as you do when you do work. Uh, his, his, uh, the group of community he lived was terrified at what they were watching coming on about this. I don't think until right now I'm appreciating what he was actually looking at. I don't know if he was seeing this, but this was what they were foisting on people. He, his community, his gay community recognized that. And I, I, my, all these years, my mind goes back to that. You could see the look in, in his eyes reflecting what the people then were watching as they brought the AIDS problem to focus. The same vile impositions because they could make money. And the Catholic Church is here like they have been elsewhere to have a moral objection, ostensible moral objection when that works two ways. One, they can still be the salesman for the thing that they can point to that they haven't condemned yet, and then they also can hide their culpability for being the implementers of this. Because why did they implement this without a clear showing? They're not doing anything different than what you see the so-called medical experts doing, and they're not in that field. And so they're in a field, a medical field, they shouldn't be toying with. And yet they are, and there's a reason why they are. But Catholic bishops were involved in this Kenya thing. Well, that Kenya sterilization program, uh, and I have another link, mass sterilization, Kenyan doctors find anti-fertility agent in UN tetanus vaccine. So now that it was identified, now everyone's got to come out and cover, you know, CYA. But the WHO, the, the rock group, not the rock group, the, Al, but the, the World Health Organization, the same people pushing COVID-19, COVID the same ones issuing these inconsistent decisions, the ones that YouTube would say are the experts, are now telling you to get the very same problem, the very same, you look at the, the data sheet, the very same problems are involved with this so-called vaccine they're giving us, even if it wasn't a brand new technology. 
that you have in the face of all this and the Kenya sterilization and and the problem with that and the claim of that in their own paperwork, we have these people like the Bill Gates pushing the green related stuff. Nobody is safe until everyone is safe. World leaders float treaty on health for all principle. And this is not health for all. This is, again, to push everybody down. This is austerity. This is what you see in Obama's scare. No one, everyone had to pay for it. No one gets anything. You're scrambling for care. But these are people that do gooders that think they're going to decide for you better than your own self, better than what the United States government has reserved to the states, which I identified for you as the legislatures have already told you the communicable disease provisions, which keep people's property and freedom, uh, liberty safe at least safe to the extent of due process, which the thing you've been watching over the whole entire year has destroyed. A global coronavirus pandemic has exploited weaknesses and sown division and strife over vaccines and medical supplies. The president of the European Council has proposed to look ahead, look ahead to the post-COVID world and consider the fact that this is not the first global health crisis and probably won't be the last. In a world that is interconnected and interdependent, countries need to be able to rely on the strength of multilateralism and international cooperation when faced with global challenges of the scale such as the COVID-19 pandemic. The underlying message of the call by 24 heads of state alongside Dr. Tedros and Hainan Gabriel the World Health Organization chief, the guy that never declared actually the, the pandem pandemic, that the guy that also said, oh, the origins are unknown at this time, just recently again. These same people are in like, uh, they're, they're like ticks on a dog. The interconnected and interdependent countries is the disaster you've seen. The laws in the United States of which would have stopped it if your local officials would have interjected what the legislature had already commanded them. You're listening to how interconnected and interdependent unity kills the world by these people and their plan to continue. In the face of past here history, I've reported on that the who does no good, the brokers of Harma. I've talked about this, in fact, I think it was 2013 that I said that. These are proof, we had a condition in it. So this proves that the WHO are brokers for Harma globally. And the, the Catholic bishops are involved. And they're involved in the green-related things. And that brought up the idea of the Vatican. The Vatican says they're broke, and are they? It was an interesting insight. I'm just going to throw this in there just to, so you see. The Vatican is declaring to be poor mouth. When you read between the lines, you realize, let's go to Clint Richardson's uh, condition of the Kaffir. What they're what they're complaining about is they're not getting the 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 receipts from the from the faithful to pay their ongoing daily expenses, and that's the Kaffir and the budget, the limited budget view you have. It's only year by year, and the rest of their fiscal assets and fiscal wealth are hidden. When you read and understand these things, you can read these kinds of stories and see what the Vatican is doing. In other words, get to the top of it. The Vatican will lie. They're not, the Vatican's not infallible. The Vatican will harm you. The Vatican will set up itself to harm you and then take the first out when it looks like they're going to get caught. Like any criminal would. So again, I could read this stuff. We can go through the details. I don't know that it's important. And it's not important in the fact that, oh, you did, now that you think you know that or you believe me and you'll just accept it, that's not the point. These are the players and the methods they use to destroy people. And the, the people that are being destroyed are most likely not able. They're, and we're all, we end up being needy. We're found out to where we are needy, and that's exploited. And so the Vatican comes present. All started for me looking at J&J &J and Noisome Newsome getting his shot. And what do shots do and who's involved with them and how they're globally relevant, how they are used to harm people, that the governments will promote them to harm people. That the so-called religious sector will promote them to harm people. And for what? The false prophet. No, not the biblical one, the, the money one. And then we brought in, because of the Africa, the story about Africa and Kenya, remember, the little pipsqueak in the world did their own 
And here's why this becomes important, because all this stuff they're doing that we've been talking about has to fold back into the mitigation and, tr and the smart application, tracking, tracing, data acquisition, coming up with new mitigation levels to keep the process working, work to win over people with the BS, best science, comes up relative to a country that will harm people and ostensibly its own type of people in a religious context we are promoted to purportedly which the little pipsqueak of a country has a problem if you look at the historical part of this and I'm going to okay so we have the story that came to mind after I saw the Kenya story and the British the, the, the bishops involved like they're selling the the mRNA versus the, the J Johnson and Johnson Israel forcibly injected African immigrants with birth control. Again, eugenics, folks. And Israel is involved and they know it. The bishops are involved and they know it. They also have their ev evasions that they create to make it look like they care. This weekend, and this is done quite a few years ago, a long time ago, this came out. Just want to. This is all just the train of thought that hit my mind. I just want to track it back down. I want a part of this is not just this, but is to show you these people that you know, the choir is going to say, "I know that we don't trust them anyway." But this is not the point. The, the trust. The point is, you have to understand that these people don't mean harm, good by you. They're going to cause harm. But it's not just about knowing that you're. People are going to have to take the responsibility to start to counter it in effective ways. In mass, in mass, it's coming very uh, quickly here. So hopefully, we're going to get why Israel becomes important is because uh, what an, a video that was sent to me by Gary L at the same time. This weekend, a report revealing that African women immigrating to Israel were subjected to mandatory contraceptive injections, effectively amounting to forced, if temporary, sterilization made global headlines. Some 130,000 Ethiopians, most of them Jewish, live in Israel. Now, i, I got to stay here. Most of them Jewish. Understand in that state, you have the political state and you have the religious state. And I have a suspicion the religious state got duped. And I think we're going to hear a little bit of that in a video when I get to that. The Zionistas were driving this. This brought up a whole other thing I've talked about, and not in depth. I don't do that study, but... If you remember what his name was, Adolf Eichmann, I think it was, and the question surrounding his sympathies and the state of the Zionists. And he was put, he was the right-hand man, if you will, for running the so-called concentration camps. And if you look at the backside story of that, and you know how to read between the lines, it sounds like uh, somebody that a communist, a socialist communist country would have him do the work and then execute him from the, when the job was done. And you've got to keep your mind open as you're looking at all this stuff. I'm not saying he's a good guy. I'm not saying he's a bad guy. I'm saying there's, a, there's people who work with people and do use people in the world for good or bad, for whatever ends. And a lot of this is all bad. That uh, this gentleman came right to mind about this, and because partly because when I get to the video, she talks about apartheid, which talks to Africa. In fact, what she's looking at in my mind was actually the situation that we're told that came out of, out of the Nazis. But we're dealing with Jewish people and Zionista. Political, the political angle was done in the just before 1800s, maybe even 1840s, in the Zionistas. And so there's a big dis big disparagement between these the people that we're talking about that get convoluted, that gets bowled over and confused. That I think we're seeing some evidence of the people that were duped by the political party, the political angle. This whole thing was set up to create Israel for. But this weekend, as they say, this is way back years ago. I think not, I think this story came out in 2013, and I don't have it because I'm looking at my reader, not the, not the article, and so I don't have that data. But uh, they talk about 130,000 people done by a government. They did they didn't care to just leave them alone and bring them as as, as immigrants. They, I don't care what even political or religious. I don't care. They made a plan to harm people. Now, in the same vein. Well, okay, so then after years of denying, there's another story. i got a couple of them. Israel finally admits to sterilizing black Ethiopians, Jewish immigrants, without their knowledge. So here's the point about I had to include this. It's not just somebody reporting that it happened, but that the there's a report here that Israel uh, admitted to doing that. 
This is a government going against the people they have invited by their because of their purpose. And I'm divor- I'm just not saying anything about what that purpose is, just on the basis of their invitation, their offer. That if you came in from Ethiopia and you were a woman, you were going to be subjected to a medical treatment that affected your your uh, your life, your body, even for a short time. It doesn't take but a, a moment of violation to your body to have an irreparable harm that should have never happened. That is actionable. That per, that puts on puts culpability on those that even think about it, and yet they're doing it. So we have not only the story about it, but we have the admission by the government of Israel to doing it to people that they were requesting who were under their uh, professing they were Jewish to live in that state, but not speaking whether that's a political state or the religious state, which is it's not a, a religious state. And we see that in places where religious Jew, uh, the Orthodox Jews could care, they think that the Jewish Zionist Zionist state is an abomination, essentially. Uh, it's not my opinion. I just go look at what people say. I'm not that, that wired up to go figure it out. It's not my, it's not my life. But there's skullduggery in the world, and there's people out there that will run cover for lots of things and be party to it. Why? I don't know why. I guess greed's a good thing. There's a seven deadly sins, right? You take away the... I don't, see, some people are really hesitant or, or, or offended by talking about religious things. Those are principles. I don't have a problem with them. The seven deadly sins, you look at them, yeah, they're pretty fair. They're pretty deadly. You get involved, you embrace them like something. You put your life behind like greed. Yeah, that's not a good thing at all. And so, whatever those reasons are, there's a whole lot, probably a lot more in seven, but the seven deadly ones are the ones that we should, we kind of know in our heart not to not to do, that these countries don't care to, uh, that don't care to acknowledge. And they're willing to follow through. So after years of denying, so deny, deny, deny like an attorney, they are then having to admit. And this is part of the thing about what I say about when you do your, your records better. You make the record so clear, they just eventually have to give it up or just you, you find, everyone can't see but a criminal standing there that is recalcitrant to the fact of their harm, which makes them even worse, actually, if you have a men, people with a mentality that understands that. Another story, Israel admits Ethiopian women were given birth control shots. Well, no, they weren't birth control shots. Because you find out what they end up doing was a whole lot worse. But they had a program. It was injected. It was the gynecologists were told to stop giving this thing, this uh, long-acting contraceptive called Depo uh, Provera, because they did not understand the ramifications. Here we go. This is a state now that's on the cutting edge. They want to be on the cutting edge of COVID-19 fighting. They are willing to do things to people without understanding the ramification, just like you're hearing is an experimental thing against the populations of the world called vaccine, COVID vaccines. And so again, these are, again, the titles. I know I'm not doing it justice to the story. I guess there would be more to hear I think you need to read some of these things to start putting this together for yourself. It's what comes to me. I just look at this and say, here's the evidence of, of not just that they harm, but that they will harm, how they harm, what the methods are, who they're using to harm. And we have a work to pull that, bundle that together, and, and start to work with that so that we can protect ourselves. Because this looks like you know, well, birth control, or it looks like covid but these are subject matter areas. They do the same thing to lots of other things, things that are even more subtle than this. But here we have Israel admits to doing it to Ethiopian women. The black lie, involuntary sterilization of black Ethiopian women. Here is uh, the supposed counterpoint. This is someone who loves the state, apparently, and this is someone who will give license by trying to rationalize the the violation to people. I wanted to throw this in. It's a bit sickening in a way to even read through it. He tries to say, oh, it wasn't really that, it wasn't really this, it really, well, the government admitted that it was. But you have the apologists that are there. And so I wanted to incorporate this link, where someone goes through and tries to rationalize how it was okay or well, it wasn't so bad, or whatever he wants to go through, to show that I tried to find as much information for you in order to present, you know, as best as I can both sides. I don't dwell on the side of the apologist too long. I just want to hear that, that point, and I want to validate any points within it 
That might cause a question on what I've understood before, but not necessarily either or necessarily does it affect any substantive thing that I know. I read through this and there would be nothing substantive in even partially what I heard they ad- the country admitted to. That the government of Israel has professed to be the cutting edge of the COVID, stopping the COVID. They're the cutting edge of the electronics of the COVID. They're admitted on record to be doing sterilization of different than the bishops wanted to call out they were doing through, the, they say, maybe not knowing that the WHO was doing. Who is Israel getting? Not the WHO, not the rock group, not the Who? Where is Israel getting their vaccines but through the brokerage of the WHO and promoting all this? Again, the UN, the Vatican, again, inside the UN. This is the hub of organized crime, global crime. And I'm going to say it again as it comes to strike to my mind. The the laws of the United States, and I will have to say every other place that has the rule of law and democracy even, had measures to keep this in control, and nowhere did it. Nowhere. I've got to keep telling you that. And so you're all living underneath this thing you've allowed. You've agreed to this felony against man, mankind, womankind. That they, these people are not beyond doing eugenics programs, denying it, denying it, until, until it's too embarrassing. And I'm, all I'm asking behind the woodshed is we make these frauds embarrassing to these folks. Walk them out of the problem. And so we, Gary L. sends me, again, all, I don't know, it's hard to describe how this, all this information came in packets of different, different disparaging ideas coming together this week to come along with this theme, if you will, this, this day. But this video that Gary L. provided, provided me, and he, we had a little bit of a discussion. There's a whole other thing, a whole different discussion I, I could have and Gary could have a whole lot better than me. I don't research as deep as he has gone down through the German pharmaceutical pharmaceutical companies and the connections and the people. All I need to know is are, where, who they are, where they are, what their connection is. And that for me, that's usually enough because I'm looking at the, the, the pointy end of the spear, not who's wielding it at that point, uh, that we can control that and that no one gets hurt. Once we have that, then we go after who's wielding it. And partly because they're they're wielding it behind, as we know, corporate covering, like the bar association. They're actually considered an agency of the state of your state, and you don't really think that's a problem. And yet they are the proponent that offers and continues this other harm against us, global harm. They're also the bar association and members are a, a non-governmental organization. You don't do that unless you profess the the workings of the United Nations to destroy people under the cover of benefits, like philanthropy. But uh, Gary sent me this thing, so uh, you'll get a link to it. You can probably find it when you type out the, uh, the title here, Outcry to the World from Israel. And what this is an explanation by someone in Israel named Lana Rachel Daniel. Who, uh, Looking through it, I'm just saying she just found out they got took. She just found out this whole thing that she moved, bought into one over to show up and participate in was a trap. Now you can, there's a whole lot more behind that. There's a whole lot more to see here. But the hub of a, a government who has been known in history to harm people, who now takes the forefront of a fraud to promote it above anything else and be the technological hub for implementing its, its furtherance, should not go without scrutiny from you. This is going to be reflective of every other organization, governmental organization in the world. Uh, Miss Daniel came with an, a reading from the description, came with an emotional outcry for international help from Jerusalem, the capital of Israel. Well, that's a political statement, isn't it? Thank you, Donald Trump. At record speed, the government's in, government is vaccinating the entire population, including pregnant women and children. Remember, the United States gave that an emergency treatment that it wasn't supposed to be, I I think it's limited to 16, above 16 even. But over there, they're going to get everybody. Vaccinate them against coronavirus. Is it a vaccination? Absolutely not. 
only by a redefinition of the term vaccination and moving the goalpost and con convoluting the condition can they say this is a vaccination. This is a treatment and a temporary one that gives you essentially symptoms of AIDS. And we're going to hear that coming. It's coming, folks. And the medicine coming is going to be even easier. Not just two jabs, not one. We're going to take the jab away. How hard will this be for you just to accept? Civil rights are put aside. Folks, listen, this is, you're underneath this now, so you'll deny that you are. You'll deny that you had anything to do. But here, it's like it's new for them now in this outcry for international outcry. Everybody's already suffering this. But I found incredible validity to the cry when you finally see the trap. And it's legitimate. Civil rights are, forget the right, the definition of civil rights in the United States of America, which you have the right to pay exactions of every kind. Of, this is under the context that people believe they have political rights that uh, protect them against this stuff. Uh, civil rights are put aside and the people are not allowed participation in multiple places in society unless they've been vaccinated or in some places of work after repeated PCR testings every two to three days told Lana to Flavio Pasquino in the BLCXKBX studio via a live stream connection who tracked down Lana after an even more emotional audio tape on Telegram. So I guess if you're connected to all these, you get to see all this. I don't. That's why I appreciate getting some of these things relevant. Well, they weren't not relevant to anything I was thinking, but there was something that uh, I needed to see. So, and I did believe that you all need to see this otherwise you wouldn't hear about it today this is the announcement of how this rolls out lana talks about the green pass this is the kobe pass this is you think it's all jokes here you think oh this is going to oh we're just going to roll out and do nothing she just said you will not be able to do anything there without this They'll also show you they have a, a little QR code, the one I think when you get Acme 3D view, behind the woodshed Acme 3D view, you look through that pattern and you might actually see the 3D horror contained in those dots. About the green pass, how about the yellow star on your shoulder, on your on your chest, folks? The pink star, how about how about any of those, folks? The green pass. The, gre the freedom bracelet. Like, you're not free now, folks. This is presumed you're not free. This is already working in the United States, but people don't have, have no really insight about it. The mRNA vaccine and human rights violations is what she's talking about. The Green Pass, the Freedom Bracelet, and mRNA vaccine and human rights violations. Reminiscent of fascism. And this is what caught my mind when I was reading this stuff about apartheid. She says it's apartheid, but this is actually fascism. She says in word, that's what got me to talk, think about Adolf Eichmann and really partly what Gary L. was sending this me to, his research underneath all the players since long time ago. The, the, pharma, the pharmaceutical companies and all the players at promoting all that. Reminiscent of fascism. Not the apartheid, she says, but fascism. Public-private partnerships, as Mussolini would have promoted, controlled by the government, of course, said Lana Rachel, who emigrated, emigrated to the U.S., from the U.S. to Jerusalem about some 25 years ago. She was won over to go back, and then she finds this out today. Rachel is active in Jerusalem as a health advisor, activist, and information officer, for a new political human rights party, Rappé, that is heavily opposed by the regime, censored ruthlessly in, to mainstream media and social media and with members of the party thwarted in their daily lives. And so she's acknowledged through this, a witness saying that that's what's in fact the fact. I'll accept that for what it is, for what it's telling us that she sees a problem I will listen to what she has to say. And when you listen to what she has to say, and put that in the context of the news, the notice that they've been telling us for over a decade now. It's coming to fruition, what you've been told behind the woodshed. How you've been told is going to come behind the woodshed. And she is now in a plea on what to do. So I'm six degrees from her to try to explain in a, in a worse than fascist government what she might consider trying. Totally out of my element, but 
for the way she's talking, she doesn't have an insight that I think might help a bit. In order to get people to understand what's really going on, because the other people that she has to speak to has been won over. She's not the only one either. There's a lot of people trying, starting to find out they've been took. They've been deceived. They're not being forced. You don't have to have, a, to have any liberty at all. You have to have a bracelet. You have to have your green pass. Why green, folks, if it's not green related to all the rest of the things I've been talking to you today? What, what did that know? That, that came up. Where do you think that they're getting these, these vaccines? Who's brokering them? It's all the same players. On the first video clip on the, on the words that are being, um, the, I can't remember, the CC closed captioning, it says, it's called the Green Passport. Not Green Pass, Green Passport. We're, to, we're not told to wear it, but when you listen to what they have, if you don't have this, you're not going to do anything. If you're asymptomatic and haven't got that, that symptom, you are going to be racially identified as different and discriminated against. Now, she has a more impassioned plea about it. I don't approach it that way. For a, I haven't approached the emotion for a long time. It's like I don't get angry. I was angry, but I found out that got me in a different headspace than what I really needed to be. And I don't say that it's really bad to be angry, but I don't function through anger. Yes, I have my moments. I really wonder why. Yes, I would like to break down and have it be over. Yes, I'd like to curdle up to cuddle up to my pillow and wake up and have it be done. But that's not reality. And so it's going to take more. Uh, I'm compelled to talk to you through what she's saying. This is for real. You're watching it happen in real time in Israel, and they don't care. They're willing to harm people in that government. That's, I call that's the Zionista. They are taking, these people, she calls it apartheid, she talks about fascism. It's no different a type of discrimination than the Jews that were told happened in, in, in Germany during Nazi and during the uh, Hitler time. It's advanced. It's been predicted. Nobody is safe from it if you're an innocent. And we are innocent at some level. We're so innocent we don't think that we have anything to do to protect ourselves. Then here comes the new news relative to the shots. Counting down. You want two shots? One shot? Or now we have the thing, the new, the new and improved coming, which now points us to the very, very issue that they've been bringing on you the entire time that I told you they were bringing on. Be why? Because of who the players were and where they started and what they focused on. The Fauci condition, the NIH, the false AIDS condition, the fabricated AIDS. It's no different than COVID. It's no different than, what, 1976, they talked about what, the flu at, at that time. They talked about it again later, the pigs fly flu. It's all the same methodology over and over and over. The endless stream of now a global pandemic they built it up. But they've been focused on doing this thing that's just now hit the news and consistent. It started a years ago as they were kind of seeding the, the news cycle, the notice cycle to us. It's being promoted today. Anti antibody, now would they throw a word, used to be, started with A, but it used to be AIDS. It used to be HIV. Antibody cocktail seems to prevent COVID-19 spread. Cocktail. Fascinating how they integrate the language together to finally get win people over, and how simple it'll be. One-time injection of the monoclonal antibody cocktail, charismimab, or boy, these words, imdevimab, taken within 96 hours of a household member's diagnosis of SARS-CoV-2, prevented 100% of the COVID-19 illness. 100% of the high SARS-CoV-2 viral loads and cut length of asymptomatic infection to one week. It's fantastic news. Says a Rajesh Gandhi, MD. Boy, the, the plugging of these names. An infectious disease physician at the Massachusetts General Hospital of Harvard Medical School 
who has been treating people seriously ill with COVID-19 since the pandemic began a year ago in Boston. For individuals, for whatever reason, don't get the vaccine or decline the vaccine or haven't gotten the vaccine, it's really proof that antibodies can prevent disease. Well, the first paragraph's a fraud. One point after the next is a fraud. The point is they're introducing the cocktail, and they're dealing with it in a shot. So let's go on through that again. Anti- antibody cocktails effective against SARS-CoV-2 variants. Now they're moving it into what they've been talking about, the mutation. They want you to believe these cocktails are what they need to do now. Are you get, are you, okay, are you, are you listening, folks? They've added the word cocktail to antibody. If you were around in the 80s, you heard that word all the time. Once they promoted AIDS and AIDS research up to where they started issuing pills, and then they issued lots of them. It was a pharmaceutical cocktail they gave. Well, we're going back in time, back to the future, apparently. Regeneron's antibody cocktail effective in preventing COVID-19, company says. Pharmaceutical said on pharmaceuticals said on Tuesday its antibody cocktail was effective in preventing COVID-19 in people exposed to those infected with new coronavirus based on interim results from a late stage study. I'm just going to focus on this cocktail. Go read. How did they test for the COVID-19 other than its flu symptoms? And how did they actually identify SARS-CoV-2? They never had an isolate. The CDC says that, YouTube. I didn't say that. I didn't even know that until I found it from there. So they can do things that science can't even do, apparently. But they're pushing this cocktail. This all came in the same week as the Johnson & Johnson moving and stepping you from two step, two shots to one stop shot. Now they're going to get rid of the shot. Here we come. FDA authorizes, this is last the end of last year, so it's not new news, it's just being brought up again this week that they've been doing this. FDA authorizes emergency use of the antibody cocktail given to Trump to treat COVID-19. See, they keep focusing, they keep, now they got notoriety, name notoriety, it's just a promotion here. They are promoting, the FTC's moving this along, uh, FDA, excuse me, moving this along, that it's quite fine. The cocktail to fight COVID is fine. Then you read this story. So I'm telling you, my mind and memory went back to the cocktail that was developed for AIDS. Fauci was, uh, don't fall prey to Fauci, is involved with this. NIH is involved with this. This promotion, is this pharmaceutical promoter and bro- broker was all in on it. It was all fabricated. I've talked about this for years and years. On Oracle Broadcasting, I was talking about this AIDS problem. Here's the story that we hear this week, I think it was, although the date's wrong. It's dated in May, but I think it happened this yesterday. COVID fight back, the critical role of HIV experts. Back to the future, folks. When Dr. Anthony Fall, pray to Fauci, spoke at the 20th International AIDS Conference in Melbourne in 2014, his appearance garnered little media attention. Nearly seven years later, the HIV expert and tech director of the U.S. National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases has become a household name throughout the world as the advisor to the White House of the COVID-19 pandemic. That's a term. COVID-19 pandemic is the term that you will reference. Appearing in the media daily and speaking plainly about the science and the nature of the virus, which if you look at the paperwork, they have no clue, and it's only best science BS. He's brought up now this week tying COVID fight back with experts that are from the HIV realm this week altogether. H. AHF salutes U.S. pledges on COVID-19 and AIDS. AIDS Healthcare Foundation, the largest global HIV, HIDS, AIDS, HIV AIDS organization, praised today the United States government for recently approving 3.5 billion, bravo, billion in new appropriations for global for the global fund to fight AIDS 
tuberculosis and malaria, and $250 million for the President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief, PEPFAR, P-E-P-F-A-R, it's, it's a program, it's a relief program, as an expression of Americans' commitment to global public health solidarity during the COVID-19 pandemic. That's enough I'll read there. You're seeing what I told you before. They are moving. They would eventually tie this together. Then they did, and they were going to blend COVID-19 like they blended COVID-19 to, or communicable, excuse me, common cold with influenza. They then dropped influenza. They were using all those numbers to do it. They then, the common cold was your nemesis. I said, but this is coming from an HIV-focused medical industrial uh, organized criminal syndicate. They're going to go back. Here's the U.S. acknowledgement of that commingling that they've all been planned on doing this whole entire time that I told you about. This is not about the common cold. This is about making relevant a failed problem about HIV AIDS just like they make out of cancer. Some of which would work at some point. Remember, if you can just outlast the cancer, the toxins of cancer chemicals, and you might you might survive where the organism that they're beating down can. They're now acknowledging this is a connection that between COVID-19, that fraud, and HIV AIDS. And there's already money behind it. It's been happening already. It's already been in the works. Pfizer... Silent P, Pfizer, begins trials to bring COVID inhibitor in pill form. Another story all this week. Is your mouth hitting the ground yet, folks? Am I, am I breaking this up too much for you to get the, the, the gestalt of all this? How deftly they're moving this back into what it was in 1984. You don't even have to go 88 miles an hour. They got you parked on your on your on your sofa to to do this type of Back to the Future. Pfizer is hoping the COVID pill in Phase One trials will prevent the virus from spreading and keep patients out of the hospital. Pfizer, the manufacturer of the most widely administered COVID-19 vaccine in the United States, is researching a new pill-based cure cure, folks, no less, for the virus using the same class of drug used to combat HIV. Folks, I'm shocked. I'm just shocked. Who would have thunk it? Pfizer, the manufacturer of the most commonly prescribed COVID vaccine, they're going to punch it in there twice there, in the United States, is researching a new pill-based treatment for the virus using the same class of drugs to combat HIV. Said twice. (laughs) They're going to drive it home. They want you on pills. How much easier? You don't even have to get jabbed, folks. What is it, though? It's HIV cocktails put in pill form, like they shoved down a bunch of people's throats to try under the threat that they were going to die instead of tell them, go home and get some healthy healthy lifestyle. That wasn't my words, folks. That's what I was told by people that were in the lifestyle. For anybody that thinks I'm talking contrary to their that lifestyle, it's none of my business. It's funny what my mind did. For all I forget, certain things pop through and how important that conversation I I would have in six months, years and years and years ago for six months, is becoming now today with a group of people that almost could see the future, but they didn't know how the future would roll out, that they were threatened by it. COVID-19, then we, okay, we move back for the first. So these, they're making pills that fight COVID-19 that are HIV drugs. Just like I told you, the re- the dialogue, the the, the evidence, the, f- the science, the participants were intending since the beginning of this thing. It almost makes me angry. You want to get me angry? That's where I start to get angry. I start to get angry. I'm going to back off of that. We were told they were going to do this. And here we have today. We're finally May, April Fool's Day almost. You fools, those of you that are just sitting by. They told us they were coming to give you HIV symptoms and going to give you their drugs that they never stopped it at all. Just like doesn't rarely, well, marginally stops cancer. When you beat the body up enough, I guess it doesn't have an immune system, right? I mean, at least then your symptoms go away. So then the hard cell promotion comes. 
So they're now moving, already in first trials, about cocktail drugs in pill form, make it real simple for you, that are going to be mandatory. And if they don't, if you don't take those pills, you won't test correctly, so you, you're going to be on the outs. You'll be continually controlled. Your freedoms, your green pass will turn red. More communism. You move from fascism to communism, I guess. COVID-19 now, they come in to promote. This is the CDC again. COVID-19 was the lead, third leading cause of death in the United States in the United States in 2020. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention was released has released provisional mortality data which shows that COVID-19 was the third leading cause of death in the United States in 2020. Do we need to read more? Those numbers are act, absolutely fraudulent. How did they do? Is it, that's the with and from condition. How did they test for that? Only by their, their cooking the books. The point about this is they come in the same week. They're pushing for the cocktail, how simple, moving into J&J, a promotion about how some governor got it, supposedly, and saying, oh, COVID is a threat. Notwithstanding all the information that the CDC would talk about comorbidities that actually caused the problem, that this flu, if it is anything, I don't, let's forget the COVID, if it's a flu that went around, was, 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 was able to kill people. Remember, the WHO actually said they don't know about the origins about this thing. We were told by the documentation it's a synthetic, a made-up, lab-made thing that they're now putting into these brand-new experimental treatments. They now swing us over to the so-called AIDS drugs just by assumption they work. We're going to put those in pill form. And the rules will come out that you will, in fact, have to take these periodically because nothing cures this, right? Notice something in the chat room comment. I don't know. I looked over and saw this. Maybe this is why I'm, maybe partly why I shouldn't do this, but it says, Hal is calling on people to stop sitting by. Is he a saint? I don't know. Well, what should I say about that? Is that if you think I'm a saint, I'm doing what I can. What are you doing? I mean, Beth, I mean, come on. If you're sitting by and that rubbed you the wrong way, I'm sorry. But that's not, I'm not sorry. If obviously, I'm no saint. I'd be dead. I'd be a Catholic. But I am doing certain things as best as I know as I can. But this is the thing about the chat room. You get these comments being thrown out. There was no real way to communicate. And I don't know the what's behind that. And Beth, I don't know about you at all. I don't have anything to say. I appreciate that you're involved. But to come out and make a, a criticism, am I a saint? Because I say people need to be responsive. As I watch our societies being destroyed, it's, I don't even know where to begin with that. Anyway, I don't want to, like I said, I don't like, like getting lost into the chat room. It's um, it's really a, a, non, a non-go, a non-communication. We're not going to get along that way. But I saw that. I don't know why my eyes looked over there and saw that. If, if anybody look, listens to me and thinks I'm saying this like I'm some exalted thing, you're missing, you're really not listening. You're looking for lots of ways to be evasive. I, I don't understand it. If you choose not to do anything, that's okay too. But we have some serious problems for us. And it's our friends, it's our families that are being hurt, and continually so. And if there's a better thing that I'm not doing, then I need to know that as well. See, here's the point. I'm not willing to just sit back if I find some better angle, a better avenue. Let's get back to the point, right? So I can get lost in all this, and I and I can't really talk to somebody. It's a chat rooms are really a, not a good way to go. Anyway, so my, I have it open just in case I have some uh, production quality reasons why I need to look over there. And Grimner tells me certain things, and so that's partly what it happened. But that I don't know why it dead stepped into my uh, my eyeball. I, I don't understand the concept. We, we I hope we're all doing what we can, and I hope we learn better what to do. And that's where I've been asking people. And whether I'm a saint or not, may, maybe one day in the future will be happen. I, don't, I can't be. I'm not necessarily Catholic that way, so I don't know what to tell you. But we have to make find the wrong we need to make right. I don't. It doesn't have to be COVID and make it right. Otherwise, we're we're living in a world where I see someone in a video pleading with the world. We're in a trap here, folks. We can't. 
We won't be able to breathe without our vaccination. We won't be able to breathe without having the permission by the state. We need a freedom bracelet. What? Who imagines this sort of stuff, folks? And then it comes on you. I just tell on one other side, we're not prepared for this kind of an assault at all. Anyway, I've got to get off. See, we need a a major discussion amongst people and work out some of this stuff, and then we need to figure out what we're going to do to stop. I don't care where the attack's coming from, to stop the attack that we see, and as best as we can. COVID-19 was the leading cause of death. No, it wasn't, folks, but that's the hard press. See, this is what I'm telling you. This week, there was a hard press to sell J&J and then introduce the cocktail because they got you all down. And Again, the choir's not listening to me. I'm not speaking to the choir either. They've got everyone who buys, buys into this, everyone who buys into this, on the edge, looking for the first next thing to let them be free. I heard a report. Somebody got their second COVID shot. They're pacing around their front yard, an elderly guy, past 50 now, claiming how free he would be in two weeks after he got that second shot. It's not a society of people that we should be safe with. And we shouldn't accept. Whether we're saintly or not to to go against it, that's not even in my radar. But we have a serious defect in us as a people, and that's global. And we believe these people are doing it for for our sake, and we're susceptible to the promotion. We're susceptible to the car dealer. We're susceptible to the the salesman. We're susceptible to deception, and we're susceptible to those that know us better than ourselves. And to me, I just settled right there. When I said that, I can't tell you how much I settled right there. That's our problem. I keep talking to you about this, what the protocols of the elders of learned elders of Zion who tell us in the paperwork, I don't care if it was an opinion, how right on that is relative to what I watch today in society, how people are being destroyed. Your grandmothers and your grandfathers are being killed on a, on a fraud and an excuse. And so I think we'll just, Leave it right there. We can either watch that happen or we can start to step up. I don't know whether that makes us saints or not. I think it's just self, self-defense, self self-protection. It's the thing they're taking away from us. It's the thing like things like Bill Gates is trying to do. Take away your ability to counter when he wants to take away the sun, right when the bees need the heat and the sun for the pollen, and they die within three weeks. And you're toast. Your world is toast. Again, it's not just... The COVID, it's every aspect of the green-related nonsense and every other crime that organized criminal cause that comes against us, whether that comes through the basis of organized institutions like the Bar Association or politicians alone or our thoughts about the government or whatever it is that we hand responsibility to someone and never protect ourselves. What was secured to us in an objective basis, beyond opinion, we never exercise that. And because of that, they figured us out, folks. I've told you this on quite a number of different points and levels. They figured us out, whether that's our money system, whether that's your rules and your laws, whether that's your laws and they make rules and promulgate rules aside of that. They figured out how to do this, how to leverage funding against you so you pay for your harm. Let's think about how we're going to hopefully stop this nonsense against us and let's get back to what's really better freedom. Thank you for what you do at reallibertymedia.com and the archives. And uh, what the uh, simulcast will be doing, Sound Minds will be doing a broadcast tomorrow with the same broadcast on his website. So I want you to, if you want to go see this in image form, you can see that. And uh, any of the syndicators, thank you very much. And the commenters and all that thing to the sites when I can finally get to them, appreciate it. I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs or nature willing. another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. 
Till next time, Journey with Purpose. A can of whoop ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop ass.